Uh, Joe, would you would you sort of say that the that sort of the same problems exist for the lower end of the flat and the jumps? Is it as sort of comparable? Yeah, very much so. The, like again, the field sizes at entry and declaration are far greater at the lower in in the um, lower bands of races than uh, over, over jumps and on the flat. Um, I don't really think it makes a huge amount of difference. And quite often you see, especially over a trip on the flat, you see horses that flip flop from one to another. We've done it ourselves with Danny, Galactic Glow, a few other horses, they've done both. Um, but yeah, it's a similar sort of thing really. And it's just like a, a, a larger pool of horses competing for like one piece of prize money. Now, how much work do you put into actually picking your battles? With, with your horses or so entries and you sort of look at the declaration stage and see if, oh, you know, I don't think we can beat that, I don't think we can beat that, we'll give that a miss and try and find an easier option. Is that how it works or, you know, do you have to, when you've you got to find that resources? Yeah, it, it depends on what's available at the time. Like, for example, jumping through the summer, you're a little bit limited in the fact of there aren't loads of races to go and choose from, even if you're prepared to put the miles in. There might only be a couple of jumps meetings with those sort of races that week. So you've sort of got to go where you can and where you get in. I mean, particularly this year at Worcester, they've done an amazing job with the ground there and everyone seems to want to run there through the summer. But because of the, uh, the, the stable numbers and the, field, the limited field size, it's hard to get into the races there. So we've run horses elsewhere where by choice we would go there. And even if it's slightly more competitive, I think it's been safer and it's been where everyone would like to go. But ultimately you can't because you either can't get into a race or there aren't other options and you have to go where you do. I mean, ultimately we've learned over the years that as long as your horse is healthy and well, you sort of have to take your chance when they come along. Interesting, when we've been lucky enough, Tarantino has won his last three and he's progressed up through the ranks on the flat a little bit you do all of a sudden become a little bit more fussy on where you can go and you sort of pick your battles a little bit more. But I think it's easy to do that when you've got a nice horse with some form behind him and it probably works in your favour as well because other people are looking at them. Um, but ultimately, due to the lack of opportunities, you, you've got to go when, you're, when the conditions suit and, and your horse is healthy. Okay, now I you look through the form book and uh, try and sort of pick the best place for your horse to go. If you really think, oh, it's got a fair chance here. Would you get your money out? Would you have a few quid on? Um, not to any sort of degree. We've got plenty of, plenty of things going on here where like, we're trying to build a house, we're trying to develop the yard, we're trying to do things like that. Maybe, maybe you could say I'm mixing in a trick and if we did get one right, we might be able to make a few quid off it. But ultimately, the, the pleasure for us is for improving a horse and winning a race with a horse. And it's, I've said it to a lot of people before, if you could... If you could bottle up that feeling you get when you have a winner, and I think this goes for any owner or trainer or anyone with an interest in racing, you can't buy that feeling. If you could sell it in a bottle, you'd be multimillionaires because it doesn't matter if you spent a million pounds on a horse or 2,000 pounds on a horse. If you can get a horse to win a race, the buzz you get when they win the race is, it's just, you can't, you can't read, it's not registerable if you see what I mean in terms of like feelings. Um, and that's what we do it for. That's the love of it. And I might have, like, I think I bet Majid the other day because I thought he'd have a chance. But I say I had a bet on him. I might have had 50 quid on him because I thought he'd win. And if he, if he got the right ride and the race worked out right, he'd have a chance. And that was ideal. It paid for the fuel home. <laughs> now, talking about fuel home, do horses, do all horses have a certain racing amount of racing miles on their clock? And how do you sort of work that out? Um, it's a good question that but I think it depends on each horse. Um, some horses will win first time out and you think oh wow we've got a right horse here and they never win again. Um, but a lot of that's to do with their mind I think and obviously how they are physically and if they're first of all they've, they've got to be able to stick racing physically and mentally haven't they? It's two different aspects there completely. You can have a really well built strong horse that is never going to break down and never have any physical problems but if he's weak minded or not competitive he's probably never going to win you a race and vice versa. We've had plenty of horses that physically have been weak or immature and not been where you want them to be but mentally have been real competitive and they're a real try for you but I mean like Majid he won he, he 
He came from Ireland. He was a nice horse in Ireland. He's by Frankel. He had an injury. He fractured his knee. We picked him up real cheap from Newmarket, I think three years ago now, when we got a licence. We bought him for Taylor to ride. Well, he's won twice. He's, he's won one race for us each year, and he's won twice this year already, and he's nine years old. Now, like, most people don't run nine-year-olds on the flat because they've got more horses coming through, but with him, like, we get quite attached to all the horses here, and my sister and her husband have come in on him with us and he was always bought for Taylor to ride and help him get going and help us get going. He was our first winner on the flat and there's nothing more rewarding than winning two races with him this year and I hope he might win another. But to me that like he's not going to go on forever, but he's still winning races as a nine year old. And does it matter if he's nine and winning races? No, it's gonna say it I don't want to keep going on about prize money, we've done that. But is gaining a reputation for the ability to win races, a train winners, more important than the actual prize money at this stage in your career? Definitely. I think because as a racehorse trainer, you're judged on performance and everyone has horses in racing to win racing. I, I'm, I'd like to think I'm as competitive person as, as anyone else and you have to be to do this job because if you're not competitive and your horses aren't competitive, you've got no chance. Um, and I think at the minute, we just want to train as many winners as we can with the horses we've got at our, like, well, in front of us. And like I said, we're always, looking to, we're always looking to try and get hold of new horses, but we're always looking to try and do the best with what we've got as well. And we're very, very grateful for the horses we've got here. And it's lovely that horses like Majid, we've had him three years. We bought him for a purpose. If he'd never won a race, he was just getting Taylor on the race course and us out racing and us learning and things like that. And, well, I couldn't be prouder of him, really. Like, if, if we win again with him, I just think, well, he's won four races already, and if we can win some more, then, well, that's perfect. Now, you mentioned earlier about horses' minds. Um, you've already proven that you can get the best out of uh, horses that other trainers have struggled with. Um, Human East, one that springs to mind. I mean, what's your magic touch? Oh, he's, he's a real yard favourite, he is. He was... Um, He's a bit of an enigma. He stopped with us under rules, as he has done with other trainers. Um, but we've just tried getting him enjoying life again at home, tried a few different things. He's, bless him, he has to carry my weight quite a bit of the time. But um, he's, won, he's won six point to points for Danielle, and he was leading horse in Devon and Cornwall last year. And I actually had a joke with someone the other day. I said to them that, like, we love what we do, and I suppose we are classed as racehorse trainers, but I think we're relatively low down on the scale of where trainers are um, but I said to someone the other day I said I'd confidently call myself a racehorse trainer if we can win a flat race with him because even John Gosden's not won a flat race with a point to pointer. <laughs> um, now you mentioned Taylor, it's yeah. Taylor Fisher, uh, Danielle's son. Um, is it handy having a professional jockey as your go-to rider? I assume that's an easy question to answer. Well yeah it, <laughs> it's funny because Obviously, I've grown up with I've grown up with Taylor. Well, been with Danielle thirteen years, so known him since he was six or seven, and I see him no different as I would my younger two boys. Um, and well, he's a huge asset. I think he's a brilliant. I'm going to be biased, aren't I? But I think he's as good as anyone. Um, I'm super proud of him. Um, well, not just in his riding career and the man he's become and grown up to be, like as anyone is with their children. Um, but having the asset of him, not only is he a great jockey, he's a horseman. Like we don't always see things eye to eye, but I think that's natural in any sort of like father stepson relationship. Um, ultimately, we every, like we're, we're both on the same team, and it comes down to it. We get I'd be his harshest critic. Um, but having said that, like when he's done well, I'd always let him know. And there's no one prouder like than myself or Danielle of him. Um, and yeah, having him as an asset to ride the horses, not only does he ride them at the races, he, he rides them at home, he schools. I think he might be looking into getting a dual license, which is another option, whether he ever uses that, I don't, I don't know. But he schools the horses at home. He would, he'd have been breaking horses in here since, like I remember him riding. Um, and yeah, it's just a massive asset to have, isn't it? Now, assuming that you sort of brought him up and imparted your knowledge on him as he was as he was growing, so is he starting to bring his own ideas to the table now? Then, yeah, definitely. And he, he uh, he's le <laughs> well, he tells me what to do all the time, and Danielle, and quite often we don't see eye to eye on things about those sorts of things. But ultimately, we're we're all coming from the same 
ang like angling the fact that we want the best of the horses and there might be three or four ways of getting that out of the horse um, or avenues to look down but it does bring like he's getting more and more experience all the time I think he's ridden 60 is he on 67 68 winners now you don't ride uh, there's a few more than I rode but you don't ride that many winners without learning anything um, and I think the experience he's getting doing that for other people and for us is well it's just helpful isn't it and I suppose it's handy for him to have ridden some sort of fairly good horses to victory to sort of know know maybe what one feels like if you've got one that's a bit special that's right and he's worked in he's worked in some decent yards and sat on some decent animals and exactly that you you know it's the feel you get off those nice horses is is very useful to your knowledge but also i'd more think it's the re repetition of riding excuse me the repetition of riding whatever horse finding the improvement in them and knowing when they're well, that is as rewarding because yes, it's nice to sit on a, a rocket every now and then and you think, wow, this is, this is really special. But to me, it's getting improvement out of what you've got to, like, to play with. And going back to Majid or Danny the other day at Utopsta, like, things like that, like, they're horses that have done plenty of racing, but we're still able to have them in a position where they're able to go and win races and be competitive. Like, Taylor's a competitive person and he just loves riding winners and yes he'd rather win the derby than a class six somewhere but ultimately you do it for your winners and it doesn't like it doesn't matter who you are you can be Ross or Ryan, Ryan Moore, Tom Marquin, any of the best guys around they, they still enjoy riding winners at any grade and I think he's only a young lad Taylor hopefully he goes on to ride bigger winners in the future but at the minute he's just enjoying what he can. OK, and at the moment, he's not riding novice chasers competitively, but still, you know, does the heart go a bit when he's, when he's in a race or is it not, not worrying when they're on the flat? Oh, I don't ever worry. I don't ever really think about that. Um, it wouldn't, like, if you rode in a three-mile chase tomorrow, it wouldn't, I wouldn't... You can't... I don't think you can do it and have that sort of mindset about it because I remember when I rode, my mum didn't worry at all and I speak to some parents that do and I just think you have to trust your ability. Yes, I know bad things happen and, like... Touchwood, ho hopefully he's lucky and he never has any real bad injuries, but I've got a lot of friends that have had bad injuries and misfortune along the way, but you, you've you got to be confident in your ability and what you do. And there's always a free, you can have a freak accident crossing a road, can't you? Obviously, yes, if you're riding in, ra like in races at high speeds, there's a higher chance of that happening, but Taylor's very, very competent on a horse and hopefully nothing like that ever happens to him but you'd be naive to say that it definitely won't because there's always those things that can happen all you can do is like as trainers we prepare our horses in the mindset of them being safe and healthy on the race course and i'm confident in taylor's ability that hopefully nothing's going to come untoward because of his lack of ability or lack of knowledge um yeah hopefully he stays in one piece